Hello you beautiful people, it's Toothy, Tooth Decay, and this is a review of our first trip to Arguiniguin on the southwest corner of Gran Canaria. Now look, this ain't going to be one of those videos where we just mooch along the street, camera bobbing up and down, going to talk to you about the actual places we went. So, what we're going to do is a little whistle stop tour of all the really nice little places that we found. Because there are loads of beautiful beaches here to explore. Fantastic cafes and little tapas bars around every corner. Brilliant music pubs, open till the wee hours, just the way we like it. Where the best supermarkets are, which ones have got butchers and so on. And also where some of the chemists are. So I don't know if you know this about Spain, but you can't buy paracetamol and ibuprofen and stuff like that in a standard supermarket. You have to go to a chemist. And of course where the cab ranks are. And I also got myself a little app, it's like that version of Uber. We're going to start down in Arguiniguin Beach and move all the way up to Amphi del Mar Beach. But first, let's take a look at where we were staying. So we rented a little villa up in Calle Teguisa. Really nice views out over the ocean. Very nice sitting out there of an evening. And most days we walk down into town. But you've got to realise about this place. There are loads and loads of little dead end roads. So you walk down five minutes in the sun, blazing hot. And then you to come to a dead end and you've got to turn around and you've got to go all the way back, all the way along to the next road and off you pop again. Not fun in the sun folks, not fun. I also found Google Maps to be out of date on more than one occasion, so you can see this little walkway circled here. This is what it looks like in real life, it's just not there at all. So probably more than any other place I've ever visited, it did pay to do a bit of research up front. So we're going to take a little walk down into town now, look, none of our crew wanted to drive. So we, we did walk down most days, it only cost about 5 to 7 euro for a cab back up, which, you know, between two couples is knee dash really. And it takes about 15, 20 minutes to walk down, there's a few different routes you can go. Talking to cabs just quickly, we got a cab from the airport to Arguiniguin, it cost about 80 euro, which I thought was a bit steep, but then at the same time, the fella did stop at Mas Palomas for us to find an all night shop. So, and it was 10 o'clock at night, you know, it's, it's not too sad really, it's only like a, an expense once for the holiday. If you turned right out of our villa, there was this really steep, badass set of steps. These things were scary, mate, I'm telling you. I mean, scary like when I asked the missus how she is and she says I'm fine. I think we all know that's universal code for I'm waiting for you to work out what it is that you've done wrong. We only used these a couple of times and then realised actually if you turned left out of the villa instead there was a much gentler set of steps so we used these most of the time and it is it's little rat runs and walkthroughs like this all the way around this area you've got to get to know them if you're going to walk around but let's speed this up a little bit now because you don't want to do a full 15 minute walk down to town with me so we're just going to bosh along to the left when we get down the bottom of the steps come to the end of the road and whoa let's slow down don't want to bump into that woman there you turn right here and then it's probably this is probably your longest road it's about a 10 minute walk down from here but there are some lovely little views on the way so do make sure that you take time to look around down off to the right here, we see there's um, another set of steps, which we're not going down today, but you can see there's beautiful views out over the ocean from here. Now this was in September 2023, and it was over 30 pretty much every day. It, it was really banging the temperature, it was lovely, but you gotta be really careful in that sun over there. We, we came down with it a couple of times, I gotta be honest. Anyway, let's crack on and go down because I want to just point out another landmark to you. Come on, let's speed this up. Here we go. Right, so just off to the right in a minute, you're going to see the Sunwing Family Resorts. Now, these are a really good anchor point. It's a good landmark to, re to recognise because off to the... Hang on, never reach ready, we? Off to the east of that, about 10 minutes, is Arguinaguin Beach, and off to the west of it, about 10 minutes, is Patlavaca Beach, and then on to Amphi. So it's a really good landmark to, to keep your eye on. Now, if you come this way... Do be careful because there's a little hidden step here and my mate's missus, she nearly went arse over tit. And if she'd, if she'd have actually gone, she would have knocked all her gnashes out, mate, I'm telling you. Anyway, just round to the left here, there's a stunning little pool on the front of this villa. I don't fancy the view off of the, the, the veranda that much, but what a lovely little place to sit and have a splash about. Um, but this car park, mate, could you imagine a car park like that back home? The time you got up in the morning, every, every one of them would have been chilled. Anyway, come on in, let's bosh on down here. Wow. 
Oh. Now my mate in front of us there, he's um, he, he, I don't know what he is. He's he's a he's a tree surgeon sort of dude, but he likes his plants, and he was fascinated by these trees. I, I don't know what it was about them, but they are really pretty. They got like these fern sort of leaves, and they got these lovely pretty red flowers. They ain't real bees, by the way. That's just a sound effect. But you know, you don't worry. You're not going to get stung too badly unless you end up paying five quid for a, a beer somewhere. So look, coming up here, another couple of landmarks. So behind me is the Sunwing, and just in front of us, on the left there, you've got the Ancora Centre. We found our favourite little bar in there, Cloud 47. Here you go, have a look at that. That was absolutely banging in that bar. We loved it, we had a great time there. Some really nice people in there. Some, a uh, couple of dodgies as well. Uh, we we <laughs> had a very interesting night with a couple of Norwegian guys who we, we still don't know what they were up to, what their story was. But yeah, two, three in the morning, we rolled out of there a couple of times. The cocktails went down very well with the girls. Uh, not quite as much as Anna's bar. We'll talk to you about that one a little bit a little bit later. But yeah, no, look, re really nice gaff. So let's just have a little mooch around. Got a cigarette machine there if that's your thing. You got to ask them though. Um, it won't take your money until they press a button, so they so they can check how old you are. So you, you got to ask for that. But yeah, so we'll have a little mooch around outside, and what I'll do is I'll take you all the way round the outside of the building, and then back in from that sort of direction you can see there, because the toilets are just over there as well. They were they were really clean, which was nice. So yeah, this is the outside of the centre, and it's all open in there. So you can see you got the the open uh, front here. And then the actual roof is like this, that corrugated plastic stuff, but that opens all the way up as well. So all the way around to the front. This is normally where the cabs will drop you off here. And then you can come back in, so you can go into it from this way as well. There's another little bar there. There's a, there's a few little bars and things in here, but a lot of them were shut when we went because it was a bit of a quiet season. But there you go, there's the toilets. Oops but very clean all the time. There's that kitchen next, next to that, where they uh, yeah, did some really beautiful tapas in there, highly recommend it, and then back round and into the bar. One of those Norwegian fellas, he actually bumped into that plate glass window one night, didn't realize it was there, there you go. Right, and then you got the whale tail. So if you go down that road to the right of the Ancora Centre, in front of the other side now of the, the Whale Tail, there's uh, all night, all, all like 24 hour BP garage down there. There's the best spa supermarket in town. I'm gonna to do a walk around video on that another day. There's a cash point. Not all the cash points take um, sort of like UK cards, but there is one down there that does. There's a pharmacy. There's there's loads and loads of little bits down there. There's a taxi rank as well. So it's all within that one road. You've got loads of stuff that, that is it's just handy having it all together. So we're not going to go that way at the moment. We're going to turn off right. We're heading towards um, the centre, like sort of Plaza de las Poetas. But we're going to take a bit more of a scenic route and go around the front. This town really is made for exploring. There are tiny little restaurants all around the place. Just down here off to me left, there's a tobacco shop, sells vapes and all that sort of thing. This is our Gwinnagwin beach itself. Um, it's a very quiet little beach next to the port. We didn't spend any time on that one because we found another couple that we really liked. Pat Lavaca was our favorite beach and we're gonna wander down there in a little while. But yeah, look, this is it's a really beautiful location. And it is, it's, it's nice just for an afternoon. If you creep off by yourself, just get lost. You know, have a wander about, see what you find. We did go down to the port. Um, we, there's a, a water sports place down there, so I'll come on and talk to you about that in a minute. But look, it really is beautiful over there. There's there's so much to see and do, and there are these tiny little beaches all the way round. So at Esnautica, me and me mate, we did parasailing, and we also went on the jet skis. And there's a couple more videos about that. I'll put a link in the description to them. So <clears throat> this is one of the main walkways, very recognisable. Takes you all the way down to the port, and behind you is just is town. This is Plaza Negra, so this is a car park most of the time, but it's also where they hold the local market. And this is next to another tiny little quiet beach. Very, very beautiful little place there. Uh, recommend going and checking it out. Water's really calm. So while we're here, we might as well do the market, right? Let's have a little mooch a bit. So look, quite a few of the cabbies said to us that there are bigger markets in other towns on different days. And I don't know about you, I've, I've, you know, I've been to a few markets over in Spain and it's pretty much all the same stuff, right? So even though this is really well spread out, there were still loads of stalls here. And I figured actually, if you went to a bigger market in a bigger town, you're probably gonna be cramped in, more chance of getting your wallet half inched, and all you're probably gonna get is more of the same types of stall. 
So we found this was actually really nice. You, you, weren't, you weren't shoved in with everyone else. You could mooch about as much as you want. You still got all the same stuff that you get in any old market. You know, the, the, the missus bought a dress here, which was, you know, haggled it down. I saw this fella last night, he was legless then as well. Um, so, you know, yeah, just, just have a mooch and, and make sure you do haggle, because they expect it, right? The prices are always up. So my mate bought his at in Mass Palomas, and I'll tell you about that another day and all. But he paid 12 euro for it over here, uh, uh, over there. And in this place, in the market, they were asking 15. So you, you know that they're, they're going to put the prices up a little bit and expect you to waggle down. So I think we ended up, the girls got an app, we ended up paying sort of 10 euro a pop for them, except me mate folded like a piece of bog roll when the woman pushed back and he ended up giving her an extra two euro. There weren't no extra two euro coming out of my pocket, I can tell you that. So it's it's a... It's a, it's a nice little market. It, it, it killed half hour, 45 minutes. It's something to do, something to go and see, and you never know, you might pick up something that you like there. So let's just pause here for a minute and you can listen to me and me mate haggling and like I say, him just folding like a house of cards. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not supposed to laugh out loud, am I? 10? To kill me today? Yes. <laughs> five, five. I give you ten. Come on, today no good matter. Come on, everybody go away. Look at this. Well, if we buy, if we, if we, if we buy, we buy two, ten each. No, ten, twenty for two. Twenty for two. No, 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 no. They, they were, they were cheaper in uh, Mas Palomas. We just go to Mas Palomas and get it. Twenty for two. Twenty, yeah. Come on, 22 for Coca-Cola. Nah. 20, 20. Well, I'll give you Final offer. <laughs> give me your tenner. Everybody got away. I'll take that sign off you, okay? And it fits it on ponies now, innit? Thank you, my darling. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, blow off. I'm going to blow off in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's enough of the free marketeers. So, like I said, we did pop down to Mass Palomas because my mate wanted an English breakfast. So, he had an English breakfast cooked by a German in Spain. Guess what? It weren't great. It was really windy the day we were in Mass Palomas, so we also went along to another little beach a little bit closer back towards us uh, called Melaneras. Uh, really, really lovely restaurants there. It's a really quiet little beach. Very, very nice. Again, I'll do another video on that another day. But, really peaceful little place to sit. Weren't over the top for the uh, sunbeds. I think we paid 14 euro for, for two of us. It's, it's not too sad. And and you, you need the shade, right? But we didn't even go in the water there because there were lots of little rocks down the front. But yeah, just looking for, for a couple of hours just to stretch out and do nothing. Really enjoyed it. Then back to Plaza Negra. So I've, I've sort of gone off course a little bit. Let's get back and see, we was going to Plaza de los Poetas. So you can go this way um, from the Whale Tail, you can go this way, uh, which is straight down, or you can go this way along the front, which is the way we just came. Loads of lovely little restaurants, cafes, tapas bars here. We ate in this one, Casa Rosa, quite a few times. What I will say is quite a lot of the stuff isn't actually on the menu. So if you just want like some uh, a cheese roll or cheese toasty, cheese and ham toasty, ham toasty, add some tomato to it, add some onion to it, just ask them. They'll sort it out. Give you a plate of chips on the side. So you can see from this, you know, this is this isn't like a really touristy place. This is more like a traditional little Spanish sort of fishing village. Um, another pharmacy there. Good to know. Um, and look, you, you, this is this is like any Spanish town anywhere. Over the road here though, there was this absolutely banging tapas bar. It's more like a little restaurant in there than a, a traditional tapas bar. But if you want the good stuff, so I'm talking about the Pata Negra Jamon Iberico, this is the place to come. They've got some really A-grade stuff in there. So I really, really do recommend that. So back to the whale tail. So instead of turning left, which is the way we just went and going into town, we're now gonna turn right and go to Patalavaca Beach. So we're gonna go past the Sun Wing, which is again, very handy to, to keep that in, in mind where it is. So Sun Wing is now just behind us. We went off down that little road to the left of it. 
and walked along. This is a, a beautiful walk. This takes about, I suppose, about 10, 15 minutes again to get down to Patalavaca Beach, which is where we are now. We really love this beach. This was our go-to for the whole holiday. This place was called Cabo Suro Este. It's, a, again, a fantastic tapas restaurant. Everything in there is, is proper traditional. This is what we call Anna's Bar. This is actually part of the Kai Club. It's, it's separate from it, but it's, it's part of it. We sat here uh, in you know, an evening drinking cocktails. Um, it was nice to pop up to in the daytime. Really, really lovely little bar. And the thing is, the lady that works here, Anna, um, hence Anna's Bar, she's a right geek when it comes to flavors. She was talking about infusing pineapple with herbs and then charring it and then taking the juice out of that to make cocktails with. All I know is these three, they got fucking mullered one night. Me, I stuck to me beer. I'm not a bit of a, a fancy Del Boy like that, but yeah, no, them three core. Cool. Anyway, the views here, I absolutely fell in love with the views. Thought it was an absolutely stunning place. Really, really nice. And the water there, it's, it's great. You know, it's a calm little beach. Me and my mate went in with a ball um, and we were in there for a good half hour messing about. So coming out of there, and there's this little tunnel on the right here so if you want to go back into town you've got to walk up this hill and it, it's a u-bend so it goes round on itself and up again and then when you get up to the top there there's a cab rank it's just in front of us just on the other side of that that funny uh shaped plimp thing uh there there it is like a snake eating its own tail so yeah you can get a taxi from here there's also a spa there so if you want to grab some stuff before you're going back to your room perfect opportunity to do so we're not going to do that now though, we're going to go on to Amphi Del Mar Beach. Now again, this is another one where Google Maps got it wrong, so I've, I've done a really badly drawn uh, route for you on that map. That'll pop back up in a minute. This was beautiful. We, we, we had lunch in this Tex-Mex place. Um, really, really nice food and look, I'm a right fussy fucker, so but you can take my word for it. Really weird thing about here. There's only like there's only like two toilets on the like for all the little restaurants along that front and you have to queue up and get the key for it. And then there were a couple of sets of public toilets in the local um, sort of supermarket area, but the doors were broken and that sort of thing. Uh, posh part of town, but not much else going on. Lovely little music bar. They've got the poshest spa in the world. We really couldn't work it out. I've never seen a spa like it. And I know to us back in the UK, talking about a spa as posh might sound weird, but honestly, this thing's like the love child of Vicky Pollard and Jade Goody. Uh, if that's if it had been raised by the royal family. You know, it's got all the airs and graces, but at the end of the day, it's still a chav. It's a spa. What's going on? It's, it looks lovely on the inside, but it's a spa. Anyway, getting off point. So we got done by the sun down there, and you've got to realise we couldn't get a cab uh, from, from there, so we had to walk all the way back in the blazing sun. It, it, weren't, it weren't a fun day, but thankfully we called it before um, we got too bad. Anyway, we got back to Anna's bar and sat there and done about 12 bottles of Coca Pop. Um, so look, you just gotta be, you gotta be a little bit careful with the sun over there. We, we were wearing lotion and everything, but anyway, so yeah, and look, if you, you can still walk up and get a cab from Anna's bar, but if not, it's another 10 minutes into town. So look, that's about it. That is our review of our Gwinnagwin. There'll be a few more videos on different bits and pieces, Mass Palomas and, and the jet skis and the parasailing. But for now, I hope this has helped you to sort of see what a holiday to Arguinaguin can be like. Most people speak English over there, not all as great as you would find in Benidorm, say, for example. But you can get by. Uh, if you've got a little bit of Spanish, it will really help as well. Um, even if you just try with the Ola and the Por Favor, it will do. But yeah, look, stunning, stunning place. Really recommend it as a holiday. It was a great week away. Uh, would we go back? I don't know, probably Lanzarote I prefer, but it was really nice to go and see the gaff. Alright, latest potatoes, off your pop. <laughs>